Assalamu alaikum. We are Team M5890. This tutorial is a demonstration of how the project was done. So let's jump into the demo. In the first section, we built our 3D model in SolidWorks. The legs have two sections, the upper part of the femur and the lower part, which is the tibia. Now, many YouTube videos and projects from the previous year used three servo motors in each leg. However, the problem with having a servo motor connected at the knee is that it has to constantly support a working torque, which can cause the servo to overheat and potentially become damaged. So instead, we opted for a simpler design using a link and moving the servo motor that was previously connected at the knee to near the hip servo motor. This made our leg design more efficient and was a great idea suggested by Iqbal Bari and Mahdi. We also want to give credit to the person who inspired us with their dog model. With the design in mind, we built our prototype to see where our design stands in real-world experience. As the prototype went well, we moved to print our 3D model. When the first batch arrived, few parts of a single leg, the print was heavy and sort of crappy. So after minor adjustments, we had our final prints of the four legs. The main frame is made of PVC. Standing. Firstly, let's focus on making the robot stand on its four feet. To achieve this, we need to set the initial position of the servo motors accurately. By implementing the whole position function in the code, we can ensure that the servo motors remain in the initial position. This is the first step towards making the robot stand. Oh, aggressive. Very aggressive. Movement. Once we have achieved a stable stance for the robot, we can now focus on making it move. At first, we used a simple for loop to make the robot walk forward and backward, but we soon realized that this approach lacked the robustness and sophistication we were aiming for. So we tried to implement the concept of inverse kinematics. Let's first try to understand what inverse kinematics actually means. Inverse kinematics, IK, is a method used to determine the joint angles or positions of a robotic manipulator to achieve a desired end effector pose, such as position and orientation. With this one can just input the distance and get the output in the angles, means position. Let's see how we have done. Firstly, let's the initial position of the femur and tibia is like the figure one. The angles shown here are the initial position of the servo motors measured from different reference lines. We have found our reference line for both the femur and the tibia here and here respectively by calibration. So to make the robot stand and walk forward slash backward, we have to change the angles for both of them by adding or subtracting these amounts. These values are calculated using the cosine's law of the triangle. The main advantage of inverse kinematics is that we will just input the value of distance, x values here, and the angle will change accordingly. We used an elliptical function so that with a change of angles the tip of the leg followed an elliptical path and complete one step of movement. Okay, that's an M position, uh, that's M movement. This is movement. Let's do it. <laughs> Alright, we are down to our last part of the tutorial. Image processing. And the target we set was clinical face mask detection. Initially, we went with algorithms to detect faces for masks but soon realized we need a more sophisticated approach. So the only option left was to use deep learning. A model was trained with around 3,000 positive and negative images in Teachable Machine. By Google, we got .h5 model in Keras. Now the final part was to import this into an Android project and use it as a comparison parameter. The Android code uses TensorFlow Lite model, which is converted from the previous model. The mask detection is in simple words, a two-stage detector. First a face detector is applied to retrieve the face's coordinates from the body pose. 
Then each face is cropped and prepossessed to be feed into the second model, which does a binary classification detecting between mask or no mask. For each case, a voice alert is generated to indicate whether the person has a mask or not. Command was sent to Arduino on Quadruped to make go into its guarding position. Come. Mask sonat to kora huye chhe. The face detecting quadruped can be used for policing which is a stealthy and rigid alternative to drones doing the same thing and its mobility is a plus point over stationary security camera. This can help police officers do mobile surveillance and at the same time protect themselves from COVID situations by being away from hotspots.